My name is Leith McPherson and I'm the Head of Voice and Movement at the Theatre Department at the Faculty of the VCA and MCM at Melbourne University. I think one of the most important things to remember is there is no one Australian accent. There's a spread of Australian accents as there is in any country in the world. So one of the key characteristics of an Australian accent, which is much maligned, is the rising inflection. So Australians will often, but not always, speak with a tune that goes up at the end of a sentence, even if it's not a question. And it sounds like I need your affirmation, even though I'm giving you my opinion. So one of the things that I think is really important when you're doing Australian accent is to get your tongue placement right. So if you think of your tongue being nice and flat and wide in the back of the mouth, like you've got space between your upper and lower teeth, and you feel like there's a bit of a breeze going over the back of your tongue, so it flattens some of your vowels out. And the tongue's a little bit higher, which can cause the accent to sound like it's got a bit of a, a bit of nasality or a bit of twang to it. The more broad you go, the more of that nasality, the more of that twang you want to bring into the way that you speak. This brings me to the next thing that I wanted to mention, which is what's called the hesitation sound. And it's important when you're studying any accent. And in Australian, it's the sound that you make when you're uh, trying to, you know, uh, uh, think of uh, what to say next. And it gives you an indication of where an accent's tongue position rests. So, for example, if like um, going like Scots, um, you want that high front kind of feeling, like your tongue's like up and forward. And in Australian, it's much more relaxed. It's very, it's very flat and central. So the middle of your tongue should feel like it's just resting really comfortably there uh, as you uh, think of what to say next. I think one of the things that foreign speakers tend to get wrong about the Australian accent is that they key into the sounds that you'll hear in a Cockney accent. There's a quite a famous or infamous episode of The Simpsons where the characters travel to Australia and I think pretty much every actor that they chose to play an Australian is doing a fairly terrible Cockney accent. That's a bloody outrage it is! And there's definitely an overlap between those two accents. There are qualities of Cockney that are present in the Australian accent, but it's quite distinct. So if you're doing a word like laugh, ah, uh, ah, uh, go back to that hesitation sound, it's that A sound that happens in the middle of the mouth, laugh, whereas like laugh, laugh, if I'm talking like that, laugh, it's a much, it's a, it's a position that's much more open in the back of the mouth. So within the spread of Australian accents, they're not necessarily geographically determined. And sometimes it's, um, it's more of a socioeconomic difference between the two, or it might be the kind of education that someone has. Um, obviously, if you're in the bush, as we call it, you do tend to get a broader Australian accent. So there's a lot more tune to it. You have much more of a sense of kind of sing-song going up and down a lot more. There's more nasality to it. And some of those vowels really shift, so they become a lot more, there's a much bigger spread as the tongue moves from one part part of the vowel to the next. One of the examples um, of a good Australian accent on film actually shows one of the things that people often get wrong. And that was Jude Law in a movie called Contagion. And that's why you won't even tell us the number of the dead, will you, Dr. Chief? In fact, you'll tell your friends when to get out of Chicago before anyone else has a chance. He does a really good job. It's a really good Australian accent, but there's one mistake that so many people make with Australian accents, which is that at the ends of words, we will add a schwa sound, an uh sound, if the syllable is unstressed. So if you had a word like women rather than women, or um, faces becomes faces. And that's something that's really, a really important factor in doing a good Australian accent. Kate Winslet does some terrific Australian accent work in like the dressmaker. I hear the footballers dance is Saturday night. I could make you something. She has a way of, of um, finding those vowel sounds without over exaggerating them. So the key things to keep in mind when doing an Australian accent is to try and get Cockney out of your head. So listen afresh to an Australian accent. Find a good central example that isn't too sing-song and doesn't make you feel like you're a bit of a caricature. And then relax the tongue. Work with a tune that's a little more controlled so you don't find that your tongue is stretching into different positions and overworking those vowels. So keep it fairly central. Keep it relaxed. No worries, mate.